It's a great pleasure to welcome on stage our next presentation, as presented by a partner and leader at Deloitte West Africa's risk advisory business. He's a multidisciplinary senior executive with more than 20 years leadership experience and alumnus of Harvard Business School. He was, has a wealth of experience across sectors, having provided assurance and advisory services to over 30% of the companies quoted on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, including 85% of commercial banks, 75% of GSM companies, and leading fintechs in the country. He's also serviced clients in over 35 countries and is my new best friend. Ladies and gentlemen, please do make welcome Temitokwe Aladinusi, the partner leader of Deloitte West Africa's risk advisory business, as he makes his way. If you no clap, now we get launch. Please let's show him some love on a serious note. All our speakers and presenters took time to be here, just like you did. Good day, everyone. I want to start by appreciating Zenith Bank for this uh, privilege to speak to you today. And um, I also want to appreciate all the previous speakers. Um, I've been learning a lot listening to everyone, and I believe that you would also learn so much from this session today. I want to talk about the future of payment security. And I think one of the questions I was asked was about security, and a lot of speakers today have talked about security. And indeed, this is um, very important as we look at um, payments, because everything we do right now has gone digital. I recall as a young boy, I went with my mom to the bank, and uh, we sat down, I was given a, we were given a tally to sit down and wait for our turn and waited for several hours before they could even attend to us. Nobody can do that nowadays. Everything has practically gone digital. And with this move also comes a lot of risk. When you say digital payment, there is also digital fraud. When you say instant payment, there's also instant fraud. So every time we are talking about digital transformation, fraud is also transforming. Cyber risk are also transforming. And so we need to have that balanced view of the whole ecosystem to say, what are we looking at? What are we doing to ensure that we have trust in the system and we derive value for the system? Now, there are lots of changes going on already in the digital payment system. Um, the director from NIPS mentioned, uh, talked about the volume of transactions that they have processed this year. Last year, it was 5.1 billion transactions, and this year, they've already gone past 7 billion already. That's a lot of transactions going on. That is just the, the count. When you talk about value, as of last year, Nigeria moved $613 billion in digital value. That is more than the combined GDP of Algeria, Morocco, Kenya and Ethiopia. So we are doing a lot in the digital space and we are ranked number six globally in terms of the transaction volume that our payment systems are handling. And all this is because of the various emerging technology that we are adopting from IoT, Internet of Things, to artificial intelligence, to digital wallets we talked about in the last session, contactless payments, you know, using our mobiles, digital currencies, and the rest of them. Like they say, new level means new devils. Anytime we embrace new technology, all this comes with new challenges. And what we are supposed to do is to see that we have trust in the system because all these technologies, they are as good as their security. Once there is no security in them, we lose trust in them, we don't get value from them, 
and that affects how we use them. Now, take, for instance, digital wallets that have been talked about. We've seen instances where wallets were hijacked, where credentials were compromised, and it's very easy. I'm a certified ethical hacker, and I lead the largest cyber security team in Nigeria, and we've hacked a lot of systems ethically. And I can tell you that even when people talk about these things, how easy it is to use, it's also very easy in some cases to break. And so what we're saying is that we need to make sure that these systems are tight and very difficult for malicious persons to come in. Now look at what happened just yesterday. The CEO of Binance, the largest crypto trading exchange in the world, has um, pleaded guilty to um, money laundering, uh, U.S. Money Laundering Act. Now, this is a serious blow to that, to that particular market. And things are happening every time. We're hearing money, digital, uh, money laundering, we're hearing theft, we're hearing unauthorized transactions. We talked about contactless payments. Now, when you take a card and you say, without contact, you can take transaction. The same thing with that contact, I can steal the digital of the card. So every time we are thinking about this, that we are creating a solution, the reverse is also possible and it's present. We talked about artificial intelligence. It is possible to manipulate algorithms and cause them to do what they are not intended to do. The same way right now in our system, some people go and change configuration and it affects transactions that are going through the systems. We talked about Internet of Things. I've seen a manufacturing company where their IoT systems and scalar systems were hijacked and they could not trade for several days. We have 5G network that has come up. 5G network can make us to have denial of service attacks that will happen at the speed of light. With quantum computing, for instance, a new technology, we can break um, encryption very fast. And many of the attacks that we have today, we go obsolete. So as I begin to round up, what do we do differently? Which is a question that was asked at the last session. Number one, we have to embrace these technologies. We cannot run away from them. You cannot say because you have a headache tomorrow, you cut your head today. You carry your head and go. And the headache comes, you fix the headache. So it's a case of evolve or dissolve. If you don't embrace it, you are going out of business. Just imagine right now a company decides not to use internet banking or POS. They are almost gone. So we have to adopt, we have to embrace technology. But what I want to ask us to do, as we embrace them, let us think security along. Don't bring security as an afterthought, something you bring later on. The first time you are thinking about a technology, think about the security. We have several developers in this place. When you are trying to develop a solution, don't develop a solution and come and say, okay, now how do we secure it? From day one, from the design stage, from the conception of the idea, you need to think about security. And that means that we need to also ensure that our young people, as has been said earlier, get into security. Cybersecurity is a big business. You don't need to do yahoo yahoo. You don't need to go and do the things that bad guys are doing. We are making billions in cybersecurity. And guess what? According to a research that was done by ISC Squared, the largest professional body of cybersecurity that was done just recently this year, there are about four million cybersecurity vacancies in the world. That means there are four million jobs, but there are no people. You can fill those roles, your brothers and sisters can fill those roles as opposed to doing cyber crime online. So I want everyone that's in this place, if you know someone that's really interested, they are tech savvy, this is a space that we can all embrace together. Secondly, I'll say adaptive strategy. I strongly believe with my experience in cyber security over the last 20 years, that governance and strategy are the most important thing in cyber security. Now, people don't, don't usually think like that. When you hear security, they always think about a tool, a technology, an antivirus, a firewall. But technology don't protect us. It is people that, tech, that protect us. People use their intelligence to put this technology together to protect us. And so the first and most important thing is governance. The board of an organization, the management, is first security on the front burner of their discussions. Right now, I'm privileged to speak to some organizations, leading FSI organizations, Every quarter, I speak to their management and board on their security. 
I, we service them as, a, as, a, as clients, and then they want to know what is going on in their system. They want an independent view of what's going on in their systems on a quarterly basis. That is the kind of thing that we want. We want governance. We want it at the highest level. It's not an IT issue. It is a board issue. And also strategy. We need to have a plan. We've just talked about the various payment options. And I know that as various organizations, we're adopting various technology. So the question is, based on our direction as far as technology is concerned, what do we need to do differently as far as technology is concerned? And I have a three-year roadmap that we are tracking and then we are implementing. It's very important that we do that and we are not playing catch-up. I, I, I talk to a lot of board directors, they always ask me that the guys in security are always coming to me, come and buy this tool, come and buy this tool, come and buy this tool. How much is enough? How do we know we're not spending too much? You will know when you have the right strategy and you are executing in line with the strategy that talks to your business strategy. Then we need to move to adaptive defense. By adaptive defense, I mean not reactive defense. What we do right now in security is that something happens, then we learn from it. Or something happens to another bank, then we learn from it and quickly update our system. Those days, those days are over. Now, the system has to think, because we're talking about artificial intelligence and machine learning. It has to be proactive. It has to preempt what is likely to happen. It does not need to see a cyber attack for it to be able to defend against it. It can preempt against it. And we have systems right now in the world that can do that. Even for what we do for our clients, we're already working on that. As they are building machine learning to solve problems, we are also building artificial intelligence and machine learning to also defend ourselves as far as security is concerned. And I don't say we should collaborate very well with the CISO. That's the Chief Information Security Officer. You should have one, especially if your organization is very established, and collaborate with them. At the beginning of every initiative, they should be in the room. Listen, a CISO should have four faces. Number one, the face of a guardian. Number two, the face of a technologist. Number three, a strategist. And then number four, an advisor. Now, many times we see CISOs as just technologies and guardians. No, if that's the kind of CISO you have, maybe you need an upgrade. You need a CISO that is a strategist and an advisor. And when we are thinking about initiatives, we can also be involving them so that we can strategize accordingly and manage our risks. Now, this is my last slide. I want to also say that we need to ensure that we have robust API security. With open banking and Proliferation of API all over the place. We need to ensure that these APIs are secured. We've been able to investigate some frauds of recent. And one of the things that caused it is that a new API came on board with the existing APIs, and nobody knows that the new one has come. In technology, first of all, you need to start with identification. You cannot protect what you do not know. So we need to know all our assets, and that asset includes all our APIs. Every connection to our systems, no matter how many millions they have, we should know them. We should have a drawing for them, and we should manage them. And that is the way we can proactively manage these things as they happen. Because sometimes we decommission API. I've seen a fraud recently, just even in the last few days, whereby it was a decommissioned API that was exploited. So if there is no proper management of API, then we'll see that all these things can expose us as we grow. Then, of course, regulatory framework. I won't talk much about that because I think the, the man from CBN did a very fantastic work talking about the collaborative effort that is required between industry stakeholders and regulators. And finally, I want to say adaptive resilience. We must build our systems to bounce back where there is failure. I was speaking with the MD of uh, the, one of the biggest... Um, trans company this morning, and he was telling me of how they are building their systems to bounce back. For instance, if there is a ransomware attack, how can we build our systems to bounce back? Every layer of your system must have resiliency built into them. Because cyber attack is not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Everyone will be attacked. And when you attack, will you be ready? And will you have what it takes to bounce back? Thank you very much.